as we have been constantly saying here and beyond, it has been an election season like no other in the United States. And unprecedented moments have shaped this day to be one of the tightest elections in U.S. history. Let's go across and revisit some of these moments. I am running to be president for all of America, not half of America, because there is no victory in winning for half of America. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. That's the best way to unite our nation. Joe, I know you're still on the, on the call, and we've been talking every day. Um, you probably, you guys heard it from Doug's voice. We love Joe and Jill. We really do. They truly are like family to us. And we do everybody here to us. It's mutual. <laughs> I knew you were still there. You're not going anywhere, Joe. Oh, I'm watching you, kid. <laughs> I'm watching you, kid. I love you. I love you, Joe. Oh. On behalf of everyone, whose story could only be written in the greatest nation on earth. I accept your nomination to be president of the United States of America. get some perspective now. Dr. Sharon Wright Austin is joining us live from Florida. Dr. Austin is a professor of political science at University of Florida. Professor, thank you so much for joining us here in Vion. Thank you for having me. There is so much that has happened in the last six months that's of course leading to the D-Day that's November 5th. What has your assessment been? Oh, no, I, my assessment is that I think that at this point everybody just really wants to know uh, who won and for this whole election cycle to be over. Um, it's been, uh, uh, Kamala Harris has been in, in the election for a brief period of time, but it seems like it's been going on for quite some time. And I think everybody is just really fascinated by it, but we really want to know who won. And I think that's, that's where we are right now. <laughs> right, and my correspondent was just saying uh, to us, like from New York that we still don't know, there might be more surprises in store. And because that's how unpredictable this election cycle has been, would you agree? I would agree. Uh, we really don't know. Uh, with the shocking poll we just got out of Iowa, uh, which is saying that Kamala Harris now has a lead, which is really just, that's a huge uh, lead because that's a, a goal post poll uh, that usually is never wrong. And we don't know for sure if she's going to win Iowa or not, but just the fact that she even would, would be competitive there, but the fact that she has a slight lead, that, that says a lot. But we really don't know because polls have been wrong before. Uh, there's been a massive amount of early voting during the early voting period, but there's still a, a lot of people, half of the electorate hasn't voted. So we don't know for sure who hasn't voted and who they are leaning toward voting for. So it's been very unpredictable, and at this point, it could go either way. Right. Uh, Professor, just stay with me. Uh, we have some voices coming across from the United States of voters as they vote on November 5th and before. Let's go across. Literally everything Trump is for, I agree with, especially religious freedom. You know, he is pro-life, even though it went to the states. He is for all those things, free speech and protecting us, our border, and making the economy better. So that's why I support him. 
And as a woman, and as a woman who's a survivor of sexual assault and uh, sexual harassment, it's very triggering to me to have a man that represents that, a man who has done that throughout all of his adult life, possibly be the president again of the United States. And to me, it tells myself, my granddaughters and my daughters that we don't matter. Women don't matter. We're garbage. I mean, our economy was better when Trump was in office. Everything was better. But I want the, the, our open borders, biggest mistake ever. But if you look at our economy, look at the grocery prices. I mean, all of it. People can't afford to live. My daughter can't afford to buy a house right now because the interest rates are super high. Uh, I'm not real crazy about my choices for a candidate. Um, but, you know, obviously one of them's going to get it. And I, I pray. Uh, for guidance that the, the right one does get it. I, and that's, you know, that's kind of how I deal with the anxiety is hopefully the, the guy upstairs is going to have an impact on it. I guess my biggest concern is, you know, is there going to be any cheating going on? I mean, that's what people are talking about is the cheating going on and, the, you know, the, the ballots in these boxes. Yeah, I don't know. If there's going to be cheating, I don't know how they're going to control that. I think the thing that worries me the most about the election is that come Tuesday, I don't think it's going to be over either way. No matter what, if Democrats win, then Republicans are going to say it was rigged and fight the whole thing. And then if Republicans win, then I feel like we're going to feel the repercussions for years and years and years. Dr. Austin, thank you so much for being so patient with us. Now, you know, I've been speaking to some of these voters and a lot of them are turning to religion, yoga, meditation, swimming classes, just to feel a little bit of relief. I mean, I think this goes to show how polarized and divisive U.S. politics has become. I think so. It's become a lot more polarized with every presidential election. And this is among one of the most polarized ones. I thought in 2020, it was polarized, but I think this time it's much worse. And, and that's why I think we will we'll all be relieved when it's over. But I agree with what many of them said. I am, um, as a political person who teaches politics and studies politics, I, of course, watch the news and I keep up with what's going on. But even I need a break from it. Um, I think that every person needs to just step away from it, just in whatever way you think is best, whether it be your religion or exercise or something. Because if not, you'll just be bombarded with these images from the media and it can really cause you a lot of stress. All right, Professor, before I let you go, if there is one thing you could say to the two candidates, what will it be on the eve of elections? I would say just to make sure that you tell the voters what you're going to do if you're elected and stop all the, the insults, uh, insulting each other. All right, Dr. Austin, thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast. It has been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for having me.